under the age of 18, a student, you just left secondary school, yes. and you hadn't yet gotten into the university. Yes. You say something happened to you, yeah? Something, something very painful, you know, beyond painful. Can you sh tell us what that is? Tell me what that is. It's, um, I have to say, like, this is the first time I'm going to be coming out, like, public to discuss this yeah. with um, someone. Yeah. It's only my family members and definitely my husband that knows about it. Um, okay. Um. Mm. Take your time. I was still in secondary school and um, I came home. Meanwhile, then I was staying in Ilorin with my parents. I was born in Ilorin. You know, I went to my primary school in Ilorin, but my secondary school, I went to Gifted School Academy in Suleja. Right. This was still in Kwara? Both, both no, Suleja and Ilorin? No, Suleja is Niger State, Niger State. close to Abuja. Right. So, um, I returned home for a particular holiday mm -hmm. and then my sisters, they all told me, oh, they are now going to a particular, like a club, right. you know, but it's not a church, right. it's a club. They, right. they were doing their services on Saturday. It was more like um, a gathering of young people right. to just come and dance, praise God and listen to the word of God. That was how they explained to me. And um, the kind of person I was then, mm -hmm. I was this kind of person. I was the vice president of the fellowship in school. I believed in tying head to church, you know. I didn't really want anything hip hop, you know, jumping, that kind of gathering. So immediately my sisters told me that that's the kind of gathering you meet a lot of people. You meet prostitutes that have given their lives to Christ. You meet cultists that have given their lives to Christ. I was like, isn't it not scary to be in the midst of all these people that ah, I don't think me I want to go. I just like, Busola, just come, come, come. I reluctantly went and um, I saw the different people that were there. It was clear I was the youngest. Mm. So I was always pinching my sister because the way they were dancing, I felt, no, no, this is not it now. This looks like a club, you know. But then it was like, this is like a new way of reaching out to people to mm. know God. Mm. So I, I was there. They said time for first time I had to stand up. Mm -hmm. I stood up and I introduced myself. My name is Busola Mokpiton, da, 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 secondary school. Then I now shipped it in that um, I was actually, I explained my journey there that I didn't want to come here. I thought people would be like on serious set of people. You know, how can people be praising God like this? Mm -hmm. But listening to the word of God, you know, seeing people talk, it's really amazing. And I'm so excited that I came here. I was really, really a bold child, like I could speak up in any gathering. So um, after the meeting, that was where Pastor Biodon preached, Biodon Fatou Inbo, he preached. After I finished preaching, he came to meet me after the service, after the, the meeting. Is the general overseer of the Commonwealth Zion Assembly. Yes, Koza, yes, is right? the senior pastor there. Right. But then the, it wasn't Koza. Yes, it, it was, was um, called Divine Delight Club. Right, right. Yeah. It wasn't yet a church. It wasn't yet a church. Right. It was just like, um, and he wasn't married then, right. but he was engaged to right. his present wife. Right. So um, that's how he, he came to me and he was like, such a bold young lady like I've never seen someone like this you know it was like wow you need to keep the fire that please can you do something in um, the next meeting before I go to school he asked when I'll be going back to school mm. so I said ah, okay what can I do that I can sing I'll just try to sing not like I'm sing very well he said oh yes that's great that um, he plays the keyboard that um, he could he would help me out, would rehearse together, things like that. So I told my sisters and um, I thought, ah, why do I have to be part of this your club thing? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be part of it now. Mm -hmm. But my sisters told me that I should not be <coughs> too judgmental, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because my thinking of Christianity then was a bit different 
was kind of like solemn, you know. That was how... What they call deeper life. Yes, yeah, sort of, you know. That's how I was mm -hmm. then. So um, I decided, okay, I went to... I can't remember the particular day of the week, mm -hmm. but my sister now took me to his house then. Right. He was living with his father. Right. The wife right. too there will be there sometimes, I guess, because that particular day she was there as well. Right. So I entered the when living did your room. Why did take you to his house? Because I was meant to do rehearsal. Right, for this thing that he invited Yes, for, for that um, mm -hmm. next meeting yes. that I was meant to sing. Yes. So she left me there, entered the living room. He was already seated with um, the keyboard. Right. And as at then, I didn't have a phone, right. no mobile phone, mm. even my house, we didn't have any landline. Mm. So mm. it was more like, I've already told you this, just work it out, you mm. know, come mm. at that time. Right, right. So that's how I rehearsed and... Um, so this was his father's house? Yes, right. his father's house right. in the father's living room. Mm -hmm. So he asked me what kind of song, I think I even remember the song, you right. know. What song was it? I will serve you because I love you. You mm. have given life to me, something like that. So mm. I'm not a great singer. Mm. So I sang it my way and then it was like, oh great, we has I went back home. And the next meeting I did the song. And as I was singing, someone came out to give his life to Christ. I, I got to realize the guy was actually even in cult, you know. So it was really a very um, touchy... Where did the person come out of? So the, From the congregation. So, okay, like, so, you, so you, you went to his house, you did this rehearsal. Yes. Then you did the thing the next meeting. Yes, right, I right. sang the next meeting. It wasn't a Sunday, it was a... No, weekday. Saturday, right, Saturday. Right. It wasn't a Sunday service, right. just Saturday gathering, right. Saturday evening. So when you were singing, this person came to give his life to Yes, Christ, right? yes. So um, after, after the program, Everybody, different people walked up to me mm. that is like, you have that gift, that calling, mm. just keep serving God, mm. you know. Different people encouraged me. It was so clear to everyone that this girl, she's a very, very young girl, mm -hmm. you know. So um, he walked up to me and he said, wow, just keep the fire burning. That's Biodum. Yes, right? that's Pastor Biodum. Yeah. He walked up to me and he said, keep the fire burning, that I'm going to give you um, books right. and cassettes as you're going back to school, mm -hmm. just be focused, don't listen to people, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And he gave me books. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the spot there. Right. I don't, I don't remember whether he sent it down, but I, I got books from him right. and cassettes. It was right. cassettes then. Right. So um, audio cassettes. Right. Right. So I took them back to school. I even showed um, my friends in school. Mm -hmm. I, I, Gave them the old gist about this new place that my sister took me to and you know that's how it was and um by the time i finished secondary school mm -hmm. i returned back to Elorin. Right. and um i was still contemplating should i join this church you're not still fully comfortable yes with it. yes because i went back to school the kind of fellowship in school was totally different from what i experienced during the holiday mm. so it was more like I was living a dual life you know so I really wanted to come in terms with the particular belief that I want to flow mm. with am I going to be like the FCS the way I was in school mm. or I'm ready to join this kind of new environment so I told my sisters and they were like see this man is warded he's now in church it's common what to Zion assembly right by the time you came back from school it was yes, already a church it was now already a church so that's how I joined the church mm. when I joined the church I joined the choir then we were at um, a we're using a particular mall at Amabola or like that in Ilorin right. there was a supermarket downstairs so I was part of the choir, I would go for my rehearsals, everything. I just wanted to serve God mm. because um, my background is, um, I'm from a polygamous family mm. and um, seeing some things play out in the family, I didn't want my life to be like that, mm. like, more or less like as the, when I was in secondary school, as I was coming out, you know all this sent forth that they are doing for you and they're telling you, you are going into the world. You know, I was beginning to get scared of this world. Like, so mm. I was having that mind that I want the kind of world that mm. will make me happy. Mm. And my, since I was already a Christian, I just, was just like, hold on to Christ, that's mm. all. So I wanted to serve in a church, 
you know, just be zealous for God the mm. way I was already zealous in school. So I joined the choir and um, I wasn't talking to anybody. Mm. I would just do my own thing. My sisters were involved in self-fellowship. Right. We would go for evangelism together and... Um, but you were still in your shell. You were still afraid of this world that people, that it told you to be careful about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, because it was a bit difficult for me to really integrate myself into the church right. because of where I was coming from. The FCS was FCS totally different. Fellowship. Yes. yes. What's, it, what's FCS? Not even fellowship of Christian students, Spence, something right. like that, yeah, yeah. you know. So, um, I joined choir and then one day they told me, oh, even sing a song now, lead. I couldn't really sing very well, but I sang. And um, one particular day, Pastor Piotr now came to me. He was like, ah, that you don't like to talk. How are you? You know, you just look at me. How are you? Hope you're good and everything. I was like, I'm fine. And then um, he started coming to my house. Right. And all of us in my family, we were so active in church. Right. When I mean extremely active in church, more like the Amukitans are so passionate about Kosa, mm. so passionate about Commonwealth. Anywhere we'd go, we'd just keep dragging everybody to this church, mm. dragging everybody, just come to church, come for self-fellowship, things like that. Mm -hmm. And we were going through our own personal family issues, right. quite all right. Did it have to do with the fact that it was a polygamous family or yeah. what were the issues? Yeah, my, my father wasn't always around, right. you know, and then right from secondary school, we're already right. facing financial issues. Right. Yeah. And um, while I was in secondary school, there were times I would go to school without um, provisions, right. but nobody knew. Right. I was very good at living, coping with things. Mm not discussing with people, you know. I just needed to let me study well, come mm. out of school, enter university and get a good job. Mm. You know, I really I was I really wanted to be there for my mom in particular because mm. I just felt um she had gone through a lot, you know, things like that. Um this particular time in church he came to meet me, that's Pastor Biodo. And then he said, um I noticed you're always all by yourself. You came to meet you in church, right? Yes, okay, right. like after a fellowship. Right. right. Like, um, you're always all by yourself, mm. things like that. Hope mm. you're good, mm. you know. So I said yes. So he said he was going to come to my house right. the next day. Right. Had you ever done that before? No, right. no. So wait. it was because he said he you wanted to find, I guess, wanted to find out more about why you were quiet? Yes, he just wanted to sort of know more about me, things right. like that, because we were always going to church. I guess um, people sensed something was wrong, like in terms of family, maybe we didn't even have money, things like that, but we never opened up to anyone. We, we would just take care of our own business. There were days we would go to church, no food, but then we'd go back home and sort out issues, you know. So um, that, the next day, he came to my house in the morning, and then my mom was in the kitchen. So I told my mom that, ah, my pastor is here. He came in, he greeted my mom, and then I told my mom that, ah, my pastor says he's going to buy some things on Taiwo Road, that I should just accompany him, you know. So I remember that particular day, my mom was like, ah, Sola, which one is this one now? She said it's in Yoruba. Mm. I was not like, ah, mommy, it's my pastor now. I'm like, there's nothing, you know. So my um, my mom said, okay, well, no problem. Or greeted him, as in my mom saw that, oh, he left with me. Mm -hmm. So he was driving a white Mercedes Benz here, like the old, I don't know the model, mm -hmm. but old white Mercedes Benz. And that was where we sort of started interacting. And, um, Instead talking, like you don't say things, you're always quiet, what's wrong, you know. So he was talking, I want to be a spiritual father to you. So at that point, even though in my world, I'm always very mindful of people around me. Like when I was small, because um, when I was like um, 10, one of my dad's drivers just looked at me one way. I slapped the man. 
like why are you looking at me like that right. you know so immediately i was about to just put up a guard you know but then he was just able to like just break it mm. i just want to be like the father somebody you can always interact with mm. and then really i didn't have like a good relationship with my dad like, he was always traveling you see he was yes, not always at home yes yeah. at home and then my sisters were all were all busy running their own lives and um I had my fears, fears of all this thing of, ah, you're about to enter Investio. There's a whole lot for you to know about this new environment. Mm. It really felt, I felt stifled in a way, you mm. know, and mm. I was a bit glad like, oh, I have someone to interact with. So it wasn't that particular conversation that made me to open up to him, but it was more like within me, I just felt relaxed, mm. like, okay, 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 you know. He just talked and he went to buy what he wanted to buy. He dropped me back home. Then after some days again, he came to my house that, okay, he was going, because the church was about to move from that particular location to another location that is like Wonderland, that's where they call it. So we would go to that site to go and see. So he took me that particular day again to go and see that place. We just talked that he's doing this. He just wants me to be talking to um, someone. And meanwhile, all these interactions, he asked me one time, do you have a boyfriend? I was like, oh, no, I don't have a boyfriend. I'm a virgin, like nothing. And he was like, oh, that's really good. That just keep yourself, you know, don't listen to all these people, even all these church boys and church choir members. Mm -hmm. So um, mm. it was good. It felt like good advice, yeah. definitely. So um, felt like someone who was supporting you, and was yeah, helping, you know, listening I, to you, yeah, and, and concerned you. about yeah. me yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, so um, it sort of just I became relaxed, like nothing, until um, a particular day, which was a Monday. I remember the previous day was um, a Sunday service and um, because there was no no telephone, no mobile phone. So before GSM? Yes. I didn't know and um, it came to my house. My, meanwhile, my house then was, the gates opened, the living room is where you just knock the door and yeah. someone will come downstairs and open the door. And this time, my mom had traveled with my younger sister. It was just myself and one of my elder sister that was at home. And my house, like a duplex, was a duplex so big that if you're in a room upstairs down, you won't know what's going on downstairs, things like that. So I came down normal. Normally, the way I come down, it was like 6.30 to 7. It was pretty early. Right. I was still in my nightwear. I was right. wearing a gown my nightwear and I had the knock, who is that? Ah, Pastor Biodo. I was first of all like, I couldn't say anything like, what was it this doing time? Yes, really? But um, immediately I just opened the door. He just pushed me. He didn't say anything. He didn't, um, he didn't utter any word. He just pushed me to one of the chairs in my living room and I saw him like he was removing his belt. So I was like, what? He just said, keep quiet, do what I want you to do and you'll be fine. So at this point, really a whole lot was just going on in my head because it was more like someone that I had put up here that I felt was really, really concerned about me. I had already filled him in the place of my, like, a father that could speak to me, you know, guide me. He was there about to do something I did not believe. And then when I was just about to react, he just covered my mouth. And um, when he covered my mouth, just like, Usola, listen to me and you'll be fine. Just do what I want you to do. I didn't struggle. 
I didn't struggle. I just um, left him and um, he brought out his pennies and I was wearing a nightgown. I was wearing pants, pulled down my pants and that was how he, he found difficulty to enter but he just kept, I was like grunting, I would cry, I would, I was just doing a whole lot of mixed feelings and all that and then um, he eventually penetrated, even blood dropped on the floor. And um, at that point, he, he finished what he wanted to do. He had an orgasm and he zipped up. He left me there. I just sat on the floor and he went out. So when he went out, sorry, just hold on a minute. Sorry, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. <sighs> because the thing, this particular time, as it looks like um, something that just happened, like an event, but a whole lot are damaged within me. As in, I don't even know how to define it, a whole lot. He entered his car. All I saw was he came back and he brought Crest. What is Crest? Um, Toothpaste? No, no, a drink then. Mouthwash? No, a well, like, drink. Like, like a soft like, drink? Yeah, like a right. soft drink. Right. It was Crest. It had um, green content. Right, right. I do yeah. remember. I think I remember. Yeah, yes. So it was already opened. Right. He had opened it and he just poured it in my mouth. Why? I mean, I, I, I don't know. So he poured it in my mouth and I had to just be swallowing it as he was pouring, swallowing it. And he finished and um, he was now tapping me like, you should be happy I'm the one that did this to you. So, and then he left, he said, I'll see you, he left, the, but I should be happy that, that he's the, the one, one that, that did, did it to you, that he's the man of God that did this to me. You should be happy that the man of God disvirgined me, sort of. Okay, sorry, let me be sure that I get this chain of events, and I'm sorry, because this yeah. is obviously a difficult thing. Yeah, it's fine. So, so you're saying that Pastor Biodon Fatoni, when he was a pastor at this time, yes, of, he has set up this church called Koza in Yes, Illinois. he was married. The wife he had was given married. birth. Oh, and he had the child. Yes, the wife had given birth to Shindara then. Shon, oh right. A very little baby. Boy, and you you were in the choir. Yes. That he he had, he'd like to be your spiritual father. Yes. And so, based on that, he would come and visit you to help, you know, yeah. encourage you and support yeah. you. And then one morning, Biodun Fatunyiwo comes into your house at yeah. dawn at 7 a.m. Yeah. And without saying anything to you, when you open the door, yeah. he pushes you yeah. onto a chair. Yeah. He tells you to shut up. Yeah. And then he rapes you. Yeah. Okay, and then he, so he says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this, but yeah, I just, it's fine. I'm sorry, I'm, and then he closes, he tells you to, he shuts your mouth, literally, Yeah. and then does, pen, you know, does yeah. this, Yeah. and then Finn, and then ejaculates, has an orgasm or whatever. Yeah. And then goes out, mm -hmm. gets a drink, a, a soft drink, brings, so he doesn't say anything to you about it. He goes out, gets a drink. Yeah. And you were so, I couldn't, you were so overwhelmed, you couldn't even scream. You couldn't, you didn't even, you, you just, yes, it just, yeah, you were overwhelmed. Yeah, it was at some point I yeah. raised my voice. Yeah. But when he told me, it, and again, at that point, you know, when I joined the church yeah. then, and my sisters used to say, 
people. He used to be part of a, a cult group, something. His sister that mentioned it, that he used to be part of a yes, cult group. Yes, and then Itu, he would mention it in some so messages now. Yes, like his testimony, how mm. God saved me, things ah. like that. At the moment, so it felt like thoughts. that was the person I was facing. Right. You know, mm. I, I didn't see him as the person that was encouraging me mm. as the father. I just saw him as, wow, wow, like he's a mean person that he could just do anything, anything. to just yeah, so satisfy. You got, I mean, yes, yeah. you, were, you were frightened. I mean, yeah. that, would, that would be reasonable. Yeah. So he goes out, he gets this drink, he comes inside, he forces it into your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then he tells you, and he's just disverging you as well. Yeah. And there was blood on the floor. Yeah. And he tells you that you should be grateful they that he, as a man of God, was the person that did this, that did this to you. Okay. Okay. Where, were your, where was your sister at this time? My sister was still sleeping. And um, apparently, I think that the night before, she went out with her friends because she was, my sisters would just go out. I was the introvert kind of person. And I was just scared. I didn't even know what to tell her. Instead of me having time to even cry or anything, I was there trying to clean floor. Mm -hmm. I was quickly going to remove my pants, then all I remembered was I ran to my mother's room. She wasn't around, so I locked the door and did like I was just sleeping. Why? I just felt... There was a scripture I used to have in my head then, marriage honorable, bed undefiled. And um, watching how my mom and dad, how they were, I didn't ever want to lose my virginity before marriage. That was like one of the things that I felt according to my faith then, that if I'm able to keep my virginity, I'm going to have a fantastic marriage. That was my revelation then. So it just felt like I had lost every single thing, everything that I had hoped for, was all gone my dignity i felt it was all gone my sisters would call me aside because they knew i was a virgin and they would say oh busola keep yourself oh don't answer people you know we so believe in you it was more like i was the flower of the family like that precious so in short, I just felt like yeah. my glory was gone. Gone. That was the first thing that hit you. This man just took my glory. Like it was totally gone. I was on the bed. I would cry, go into the bathroom, pour water on my body. I think I had my bath up to 10 times that morning mm. because I, I just felt I needed to be cleansed. Mm. Would go and wash up, wash up. I did not come out till like 12 noon. As at that time, I, my other sister was back. I couldn't say anything. Was back from where? Like she she went out. Oh, she went out and yes, she came back. Yes, overnight. Like she didn't sleep at home. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, so she didn't sleep at home. I thought you said somebody was sleeping upstairs. Yes, I had two sisters right. that were okay. around then. Right. Yes. So one sister had gone out. Yes. And came back the next morning, but the other yes. one was sleeping upstairs. Yes. Yes. How did he know that nobody was? Their parents were not. Their mother wasn't home. How could he have known that he could do this? How? Yeah, it was, you know, I guess by the time he was already coming to my house, he already knew how my home was functioning. You know, oh, this person is not around. Because my mom and my little sister mm -hmm. traveled that time. Right. So it was just myself right. and so this my knew. sisters right. that were around. So nobody else was around. Right. And you he knew the way the house was big and all of that. Yes. So it, it wasn't even something... He didn't do it in a way that it was inside the house. It was just the living room because it's a duplex. You open the door, you see the living room, then you have to step down to get to the dining area. So it was just the open door. It was just on this side. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, there was no distance. Mm. Wow, okay. 
I'm sorry about this. Um, <laughs> I've and so I've, over the years. Yeah. yeah. And this is the first time you're talking about this to anybody apart from your family. Yeah. Like it's, um, you know, I had to really come out to say this because um, I was already hearing things. Right. More like another narrative uh, was being said. Uh, and I've kept quiet over the years. Uh, I know what I've personally gone through. Mm. I know how I've like struggled. You know, when you're just struggling, you're just pushing your head anyhow, like, no, there's something about me. You're trying to figure it out, you know, you're not just able to get yourself. And thank God I have people that are working with me now, that are able to help me through healing process. Mm. And I'm seeing a way that I can also help others, mm. you know, people that are silently going through this kind of thing, because mm. the pain is not what you can define. The hurt is not the kind of hurt that you can say, ah, I even know how to come out of it. It's more like you're struggling. It's a struggle. When I mean it's a strong struggle within. You're trying to still see yourself with that high esteem, but you're not seeing it. You're trying every way. Sometimes you try to get it through validation of people. It's true what your friends, sometimes it's true a lover. Some, you know, you, you're sort of in a situation where you don't have control of things. You're just depending on everything around you. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. Um, so I want, to, I want to stay here where you are now and then before going back into that, that, mm -hmm. that, that part, however painful it is. So you said something, you said he, is, he has been spreading or there has been yeah. a spread of a different narrative. Why? Why? Who is spreading this narrative? Or why would anybody spread a narrative if you've not talked about this in years to the public? Yeah. What, what's, what's, what's going on with that? It's um, social media. Yeah. Like, I think my husband put up some posts right. and then he right. mentioned from Ilori to Lagos right. to, you know, Abuja, Dubai, right. you're doing this. Your husband is Timmy Dakolo, the yes, singer. Yes, Timmy Dakolo, the yes. singer, and right. he's aware of, of everything that happened. Yes, yes, he has always been How aware. How long have you guys been married now? We've been married for six years. Six years, right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been aware. It's not like it's a new thing. But then when you keep hearing news of this person doing this, mm. this person doing that. And By this you mean abusing other women yes, and girls? Yes, abusing other women, right. other teenagers as well. Other teenagers, because you were yeah, a teenager Yeah, I, I was a teenager then. I had not even entered school. I was still trying to do my IGMB to mm. find my way into university. Mm. So, um, so, I, I do, so I found out about this a week ago, about your, your husband's posts. Yeah. Um, and apparently he came out, he didn't mention the yeah, name. Yeah, he didn't mention me. So he came out to talk about this person who has been hurting mm -hmm. women in, through the church. And apparently he had talked about it last year, last year without mentioning names. Yeah. So this obviously had been something that had been deeply painful to him. Him, yeah, I, yeah. So based on what you were saying, because he spoke out, you know, and the people that he was talking about, which is Biodun yeah. and his people, yeah. knew that the Timmy was talking about him. Yes. So they be, so you were saying they began to spread stories about you that you heard about. Yes. yes. I, I think in a way they had already even um, spread some stories what, what because kind of the thing? first time yes. when it happened, yes. you know, first time when Timmy spoke. Yes, right. when Timmy spoke up. Someone was saying it, like another pastor was saying it that oh he said you guys had an affair. Ah, so you had heard the pastor say to your husband yes, yes. that Biodun said he had an affair with you. With me. Now, sorry, but you were under 18 at this time. I so was under 18. If he had an affair with you, he was having an affair with a minor anyway. Yes. And this is, a, this is obviously, because I've heard this part of the story, this is it, obviously a well-known pastor, even know, though we will not mention the pastor. Exactly. Name. It's just a thing of, that actually made me, even before all these stories, I started hearing stories, yes. I already lost all the credits of men of God trying to do like they are listening to you, mm. like they care about you. Mm. Since then, I've never worked in a church. Mm. I've, I just go to church anytime I want, come out. Mm. I'm not part of any group. It's b about my relationship with God. Mm. Mm. 
So, so the first time Timmy spoke out in, in the social media without calling Beyond his name, he began to hear stories. That's the first time this stories then you got heard yeah. from this big pastor. Yeah. And then Timmy couldn't Timmy spoke out again this yeah. year. Did something trigger Timmy speaking out again this year? There was this, um, I was just there in my studio and I had Your phone photography calls. Studio. Yes, my yeah. photography studio. And I had phone calls, you know. I eventually I picked up, ah, Busola, don't check online, no. Something is going on. You know your truth. My sister called me, then she was like, you know your truth. A friend just called and she said, imagine people saying rubbish, someone saying rubbish about you on social media from where now? That Busola just don't mind all these people. I was like, what, 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 what? So I went online and I saw it. You saw what? I saw the message the person put, oh, um, go and ask your wife. The person responded on right. Timmy's post. Right. Go and ask your wife, your wife that was sleeping around with pastors in Ilori. Right. Go and check the DNA, spending church money. All right. that really, it um, triggered a whole lot. Like, right. I felt like I've been bullied enough. Mm. I've, I've kept quiet mm. for a very long time. Mm. You know, even when I heard there was this main story that came out previous year of a lady, you know, I didn't put my mouth, you know, I just kept quiet. And me keeping quiet, I felt like I was just losing myself. Like, I'm, you're losing yourself, someone is bullying you, you're not getting the opportunity to speak up, to say something. DNA of my children, that's in short to just say oh she's promiscuous so, so these people wait so this lady one of these messages that your friends actually looked at was somebody questioning the paternity of your children exactly be because of what timmy had said. had said and timmy never mentioned me he didn't mention you you he didn't mention me right. i meant so and so whoever was responding these people who were responding obviously knew about you and about what biodun had Exactly, done with you exactly. and we're trying to manage this situation. Exactly, exactly. So um, at that moment, see, I had a very long silent moment. When I mean, I just sat down. I had to tell my clients at the studio that, sorry, I just need to sit down. I went to the toilet and I sat down for almost 20 minutes. What should I do? I'm like this quiet person that I'm just getting to connect with myself. What's all this? Mm. And um, at that point, I started telling myself, I think you have to be courageous to come out and say your truth. So before these accusations came, you were not going to come out and say anything about this? Yes, no, I, was just, just to... I was just quiet. I was just quiet. Even when um, church members, some people would ask, ah, what even happened now? Koza, Is it church nothing. members? You mean Koza church Koza members? church members, especially the early church members then. I would tell them nothing. Oh, I just felt like, you know, we'll get to that part where I would say how I came out of the church yes, and so, things like that, yes. you know. But I was, I'm going to ask again, even though, I, I mean, if, if, this, if, if, if what you say or call is an irrelevant question, but mm -hmm. why did Timmy speak out again this year? What triggered that? You have Different people right. that have reached out to him, right. more like, you are the voice that can help us. This uh, person is still doing this. Right, so because he had spoken in the past. Yeah. And apparently, like you say, this building continues, yeah. you know, to, people say that building continues yeah. to have affairs with teenagers at below 18 yeah. and above. Yeah. So people come to Timmy to tell him about what this happened. Yes. And Timmy is triggered again. Yes. Because this thing that happened to you that you know about, it's not happening to other younger women. Yes, exactly. And that's actually the point why I, I decided to let me come out. Yes. Let me come out and let them know that you're not alone in this. Yes. Like it's happened to me. I'm walking through my healing process yes. with great people. So it's a hard one. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah. But then, thank God for, for a great husband, I would say. Mm. Some people are, are, are still single. Some people are even probably still struggling in their marriages because, mm, because of things of like this. So, okay, let's go back. And I'm, again, it's a difficult thing, but it's necessary to do that. 
So, Biodun does this mm -hmm. and does this to you, rapes you, mm -hmm. allegedly, yeah. and um, you go into the room, he goes home. Yeah, he went home. And then what happened? That's it? That was on a Monday and um, at that point I was just scared of him. Scared of him? Scared yes. of him, yeah. And um, I love my family, I don't want anything to happen to anybody. Because he's an ex-cultist, as he yeah, has said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that image was more in my head than, than any. Pastor. Yeah. So um, the next, the like the Bible, I still had to go because my my sisters were cell leaders. So I still needed to follow them. The Apusola, they were coming to church. Oh yeah, let's you had to go. follow them back to the church that Biyomo was pastor church. of. Had you told them about what happened? No, no. Huh. I didn't tell them. So, okay, so this was the same day? No. Or this was days after? Yeah, days after, so but that same week. week. That same week. So you'd week. been raped by Biodon. He'd gone. You hadn't shared this with anybody. You were yeah. still dealing with the fact that as a young Christian girl, yeah. for whom virginity was a big deal, you just yeah. felt that somebody had taken something very important to you. Yeah. You'd not found the word to tell your sisters yet, but you had to follow them back to his church. Yeah. Right. So I went for the midweek service. That was like the worst. Did he preach on ceremony. that day? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And um, it was about grace. It was Gra about grace. Grace, grace, the grace of God. <sighs> you know, like no matter what you do, the grace of God has covered all your sins. Like God doesn't even see any of your sins. So um, I was there trying to understand what, what is this all about? What is this? In short, that day I just attended church because I attended, because I had to attend my sisters. And after service, a brother came up to me, one of the protocols, and then he said, um, Pastor Modeli wants me to come and help at their house. Who is Pastor Modeli? That's his wife. That's Biodun's wife? Yes. Biodun's wife asked you on the week that this happened to come to the house? Yes, told I someone to come and tell me that uh, she would want me to come and help because she has a baby right. to come and help at home. Has she ever asked for this before? No. None of my siblings had gone to their place to help. Right. So randomly... So Immediately, really, yeah. I, I had to, I turned to my sister. I was like, ah, sis, I don't understand. I said, am I Omodo? Omodo in Yoruba is domestic mm -hmm. help, help yeah. now. Yeah. That's, what is all this? That was when she now said, ah, that is not a new thing, you know, that church members go to help her. Ah, right, okay. Right. okay. So, at that point, I was mm -hmm. just like, okay, okay. So... Pastor Piotr now came. He just said, I'll, I'll be coming to your house when I leave to come and pick you. To come and pick you? Yes, to go it and was help evening. Yes, so I would sleep over. So Piotr, Patrimbo, after doing this thing, yes. walks up to you in the church after yes. preaching about grace yes. to say he will come and pick you yes. to come and help his wife. Yes, that Pastor Modeli needs me to help. I went back home with my sisters. At that point, I was thinking, should I tell my sisters? Should I not tell? Should I tell? Should I not tell? I was just frightened and afraid. But in my mind, I was like, no matter what, Busola, just prevent anything like this from happening to you again. I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I still had to like, oh, let me respond like nothing happened. Because I felt, I was trying to keep my people safe. So after, after like we returned home and he came, the wife was actually in the car with the baby and he came to come and pick me. He came to your house to come and pick you? To come and pick And he me. was alone in the car? The wife was in the car. The wife was in you know, it's like after service, right, going so they both home, came so to you pick both you. came so to pick me. Picked me from home, right. and then we went. They were staying somewhere in Songo. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask. I mean, I, I, I work. I do work at Joy Inc. I yeah. know how trauma works. I know how this works. Yeah. But some people are not familiar, so I'm going to ask a very stupid question. Yeah, you can. 
This man just raped you. Why did you why in God's name did you go back to his house? Nobody knew. Yes, but you knew. I knew. Yes. But I was totally afraid. I was a teenager. It's not like I have my dad was available that I would feel and I didn't even have that kind of relationship with my dad mm. that I would feel, oh daddy, this thing Auntie I didn't daddy. feel like somebody was responsible for me. Mm. In, in short, it was more like him that I felt was responsible for, for me. For you. Like I was beginning to see him that, oh, see, see, see the person that is being there for me. So it was more like my hopes were just shattered. Yeah, yeah. Everybody know. trying to find out how to navigate their own lives. Like that's how my family, you know, they were all trying to just find a way. Hey, my sisters, you know, myself and my sister were trying to enter university. But, you know, they more like face your life face your life kind of thing face your life there was just no other option yeah you were frightened you were, I was, you were frozen i was i was frightened yeah. totally frightened because yeah. at that point like i said i didn't see him as my pastor mm. anymore mm. i just saw him as somebody that mm. maybe the old side never left you saw him basically at this point as this cult is that you have been told about. Yeah. So um, that was how I went to the I went to the house and um, I was always carrying I carried baby. It was late already in the night, mm. so his wife entered the room. So that Pastor Dilly entered the room and um, I carried Shindara. Meanwhile, at home I wasn't the kind of person that used to clean the house. Right. So that was why I was even telling my sisters, like, you people are the ones that clean the house. I don't know why they de Pastor Dele decided that I should be the one to come mm. and help her cook and help her clean. Mm. That I'm not good at that. I'm just learning. Mm. You know, they know this girl just came back from secondary school. Mm -hmm. So how can she do all these things? But my sister just said, I'll just go and help now. Because, people, because they yes. did it for people. He called yes. different people. Yes, he called different yeah. people. That wasn't the first time. So it's the strange thing to your sister. Yes, sisters. yes. So um, that day, that night, I carried the baby, Shindara, and Pastor Dele was lying on the bed that was in their, in their own master's bedroom. So um, she now said, oh, Busala, have you eaten? I will go, I'm okay. I didn't bring any clothes, by the way, because mm. I didn't have mine to Stay have my bath, right change. Yes, just mm -hmm. to leave as soon as you I go. would just sleep, wake up, and go and do my own thing at home. So I carried baby. Pastor Biodon walked in, and he said, ah, I've cleared the guest room for Busola. Busola should go and sleep there now. I looked at Pastor Dili. I said, Pastor Dili, you're the one that told me to come and help you with Shindara. I would like to stay on the bed with you. He said it again. Ah, but why would you want to stay here when there's a spare room for you? That, that room was meant to be like, I think like, he cleared the room in short. You know, that you can go and sleep there. Because I already, meanwhile, by the time I walked in, mm -hmm. In, at some point where I was just there alone at home, you came to me, you're going to sleep in a guest room and I'm coming to meet you there. Okay, all right. So, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so you, when you came into the house with both of them, he found a way to corner you and yes, see that you were sleeping sleep in, the, sleep in guest the guest room. room. And I'll come and meet you there. <sighs> so, okay. so, um... He was just let her sleep. I said no. He walked away again. I made sure I just carried Shindara. Like yes. she was a baby, really little baby then. So then um, she now said, okay, Busola, just help me. Let's lay the bed, everything. As we're about to sleep again, he came in again. As we were to sleep in his wife's room? Yes. In the master bedroom? In the master bedroom. He came in again and said, Busola, he was just pacing the floor. Mm, pacing around. Yes, yeah. like he came again. You should go and sleep. You should go and sleep. I had to just look at Pastor Dilly. I just looked at this. I said, please, I really need to sleep with you on the same bed. 
At that pastor. point, yes, that Pastor point. Modeli now said, Biodo, please leave her. She wants to stay here. Right. Right, okay. Right. So immediately she said that uh -huh. he went away. Right, okay. Right. And that's how she slept, I slept. Then I stood up and I locked the door, right. the room door. Right. And that's how that night was. Right, okay. I woke up in the morning and um, let me clean the house normally. It was already. I woke up in the morning and um, let me clean the house normally. He was already in the living room with Bible on his laps. And what? With Bible right, on, on his, his laps. laps. Yeah. Right. And then he looked up. I greeted him. He looked up. He looked down. Then he came to meet me. He said, nobody ignores me. <laughs> that he wanted, oh he wanted to hurt that. I knew he wanted to do something with me. And I made sure it did not happen. He just said, nobody. At that time, I was even in the kitchen. He just slapped my butt and he left. And I went to, um, I just did all the cleaning that I needed to do at home, there in their house. I prepared food. Another church member came and you know, we finished all that. There was no time for me to go home. I told Pastor Dele, I said, I want to be going home now. Then he came into the picture. He said, um, oh, I'm came going into out. The yes. People said, when he heard that you wanted to yes. go. Yes, yes. Okay. He said, I'm going out. I'll um, drop you off on the way. Okay. So I now told her, I said, I'm, I don't, I just want to go all by myself now that, ah, don't worry, sir, don't worry. This whole thing is just tiring. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I've tried to be like a superwoman, superwoman all along, like um, I don't like to remember these things. I see men of God to just be mean. So, okay, this is very painful to go through, but um, you went to do this for other women who have gone through this or who are at risk of going through this again? It's actually difficult to say who have gone through. Who could have, Because yeah. it's more like it lives with you. Mm. Right, so it's, it's not a one-off thing. It's not a one-off thing. So it's because who are going through it. Yeah, who are going through it. It's just like the level I'm at now, mm -hmm. that's not where I was Before. years ago. Right. But it's all a struggle. Mm. You know, that um, poor self-perception. Mm. You just look at yourself like you're worthless. You know, when you, when you visualize the image, you visualize the, everything that happens, mm. it's, it affects mm. you mentally. Mm. But I'm going to ask another stupid question. Mm -hmm. But why? Like, if, if someone did something so terrible, why are you the one that feels bad about yourself? <laughs> you mean... <laughs> the way the whole thing changed after, like mm. I will talk about it, after he, he came, mm. when my brother approached him and he started begging, you know. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. 
and oh, okay. you know. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. so let's so that so that we, people can follow the trail. Yeah. So I, I sense that I mean, I, I even you, I asked not to be told the story before the conversation, because yeah. but then I sense that there is something else coming because yeah. he, he say he said to you. I would take, first he had said yeah, to you. Yeah, because that was um, the second time it happened again. So it happened twice. It happened twice. In one week. In one week. That's the rape by building happened twice in one yes, week. Yes, in one week. So that day I entered the car, the um, white band. So after you had said you were not going to go, he basically insisted that you had to go with him. Yeah, that he would the drop wife you was like, go now, Pastor oh, just wants to said, drop you. I was the wife like, didn't think to ask you. No. Why are you so worried about going away? She didn't. She just mm. said, follow Pastor now. Mm. Pastor mm. is going just following him drop at the junction. Mm. So, because that was what I said, I would just drop at the junction mm. of the house mm. because there was, it was quite a distance to walk from their house to mm. where the taxi, you could get a taxi. Mm. So, entered this car with, um, there was a church member. Mm around then right yeah so, you mentioned that the church member yes. had come in the morning yes so the church member actually just dropped off before we even got to the junction right and then he was driving i was in front he was the one driving mm -hmm. he just changed like he made a detour immediately so, he dropped off this other church member he just changes the route yes after we advanced to another level like before we got to the main junction right where I could get a taxi. And then I was like, ah, oh, Pastor, go and drop me, go and drop me at the junction. Can I come down, can I come down? He was just smiling. And then he was just saying different things like, I am yours. You do what you want, what, what I tell you to do. And he just parked the car when he got there. In, in, the, in that, at that moment, my heartbeat was very fast yeah. because I knew what something was, was about coming. to happen again. Something was about to happen again. There was nothing. I didn't, I didn't even think of violence. I didn't think mm. of hitting something. I didn't, I didn't mm. think of that. At that point, he just he came down from his car and opened the door, pulled me out. This was on the main road? Yes, yeah, somewhere with um, nobody was there, right, not so on the main into, road. Right, yes, right, so entered the off corner of the main road. Yes, yes, we never even no. reached the main road. Ah, right, because you came from his house. Yes, so the we road never to, reached. Right. It was just the road to another place. Right. Anybody that knew Songo then was just full of bushes here right. and there. Yeah. Houses were just beginning to um, be developed there. So he just um, parked and came out, pulled me. I told you, I told you. I wanted to do this to you in the house. You did not answer. And that's how he bent me over. He bent me over at the back of the car. At the back of the car, opened the door. At the, then later on, put me at the bonnet, like my hands like this. Then later on, even just held my hands like this at the back. Held my hands like this. Like, I didn't want to be cruel to you. Just answer me. Just give me what I want. So, at that point, I didn't even do anything again. I just allowed him. So he raped you again? Yes. So he did it then. <sighs> and then he came. I was more or less like a slave now. So um, he did it there, he ejaculated and he put me in the car and started saying sweet things like, oh, Busola, I think I love you, saying things, I didn't even say anything, I didn't say anything, we got home. He dropped me off. He said, you'll be fine. That this thing is not a new thing. I told his ministers then that he mentioned it, that men of God do this. 
the minute he's when he talked to his church, his fellow pastors, in yes, the church, later on, they said, Men of God, do it. Yes, no, okay, he told them because I told them that at this point he mentioned it that he was saying, Men of God, do it. It's right. not a new thing, right? And he still denied it that he didn't say that, but he said this to you, but he said it to me, that men of God do this, men of God do this. I got wow. home. Right in front of my gate, I came He dropped down. you at home? Yeah, he dropped me at home. And I entered. At that point, I went to go have my bath immediately. I went to have my bath. I didn't come out at all for like three days. That particular time, I didn't go to church the, the Sunday. So it was getting like worried yeah, I didn't see you in church he came to the house to the house after he didn't see you in church on Sunday yes like what happened <sighs> what's this you know but wasn't this strange to your sisters why was this married man always coming to check up on you they didn't <laughs> It wasn't strange. It wasn't strange because, I mean... It I, was like, it was our pastor. It's normal. It's, yeah. They call it visitation. Uh, yes, and more or less, we were very active in church. Yes. You know, right. even um, this infinity group, mm -hmm. the singing group Olorio then... Olorio Ko, the singers, yes, yes. They used to come to Ilori then, right. and we would host them. The right. church... So you were a church, church family. Yes, so the church did not really have so much money to be able to put all of them in hotel rooms. Right. We would host them in my house. Right. We would cook for them. Even with the way we didn't really have so much money, right. you know, we would just do, do it our, for them. Yes. I know how these things happen. And sometimes right. even the boys, they would, they would notice like, ah, what's happening now? Let's help you with this. Let's help you with that. You know, so it was more like church family. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. very, so mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't even think of it. It was it nothing as, strange about yes, it. Yes, like... He was coming to my house and, you know. So he dropped you off. I mean, he came back after mm -hmm. the service to find out why yeah. you, he was worried. Yeah. And for your sisters, it's like normal concern. Everybody, but for you, you, we were all there. Yeah. We were all there in the living room and yeah. they were just like, oh, we are fine, everything. I said, okay, yes. I was fine. And then... Um, the next time, I was still contemplating, how should I tell my sisters? Mm -hmm. The only thing that just kept me from telling them was, this person is just acting nice. Mm. This person is not nice. Like, this person can do anything. I was just saying it. I was already saying it like, I don't think he's really truly born again. That's how I was saying it then, because I just felt that you won't be born again and then you do this kind of thing and it, it felt like he didn't have any remorse. It felt like he could go back to do anything, you know. So that's how I also just felt like he can come to my house, send someone to come and do something, come and kill. Or you know. I was just, I didn't feel safe. Yeah, there was no man, yeah, yeah. no man. It's not like I had the covering of my dad, right. like right. somebody that could protect us. Yeah. And my mom was, I was all sold out to just be there for my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't even tell my mom. And my mom and I, we sort of used to talk. I was like mm -hmm. the stubborn person that, you know, some things that were troubling her, she would easily talk to me about them, mm -hmm. you know, and I would pray with her and all those things. So all this, I was quiet. I would still go to church come back, but then I now stopped um, being active in choir. I just told myself, on no account should you be with this guy alone. On no account mm -hmm. will you go to his house again. I was just trying to like give myself different um, things to avoid so I don't find myself in that state anymore. Mm -hmm. And then um, myself and my sisters would still talk around because they would they, they held my virginity like it was theirs. Mm. 
So they will talk around the day, hey, Busola, when you even have your first boyfriend, oh, don't do this, just continue. And I will still smile. But whenever we had such conversations, mm -hmm. I would just run back to the room again and cry and cry, you know. I traveled to, it was when I was in Lagos. I told one of my sisters, she was coming to Lagos, that ah, please let me just follow you. I just want to come here to Lagos. She came to um, Lagos, I followed her. Um, I told her she was actually the one that came to me and then she told me she had told me about a dream before that she had mm -hmm. and that I saw that something bad happened to you mm -hmm. that my sister is like someone that she dreams like she sees things either things that are happening to you now or things that will happen mm -hmm. So mm. at that point, she told me, she said, I had a dream, you were crying seriously. Mm. And I saw blood on the floor. And mm. I saw Biodo sitting on a chair. Oh, wow. She saw it in a dream. So that moment, I was just, I was sort of like in shock. Like, I denied, I said, ah, no, no. The next thing I just started, because as at that time, that was the same time. I, the way it was, I was in Lagos, I was, it was night, I was about to sleep. I was now crying, mm. like I wanted to pray, but I couldn't pray. Mm. So she was passing by and she had been trying to tell me this because even when we were there in Lauren, she told me she, she, she didn't just have the dream, she had mm. the dream since. She called. She called uh, my sister that mm. time to say, I have something that I want to tell Busala. I have something that I want to tell her. So it was on that very day that she just told me that, Busala, this is it. Tell me what happened. Mm. I started crying. Mm. Then I told her what happened. She started crying with me. She was mad. She was like, Busala, we have to go back to Ilori. We have to go back to Ilori. So we came back to Ilori that week. My brother, my brother was in the um, University of Ilori then. Called my brother, called my other sister, because then I have three other sisters. One was in Kaduna doing her youth service, or Kano rather, doing her youth service. And this one that followed me to Lagos, she wasn't the one that was there that day that it happened that I was sleeping. Mm. So that, that when we returned back, we told the three, um, the other two. Mm. My brother was angry. My brother took pocket knife, just dragged me, dragged my hand. Let's go to his house. Mm. We went to his house. Mm -hmm. Immediately saw my brother and I coming. Mm -hmm. He quickly came out of his house. Mm -hmm. I was like, Busola, Busola, what's the matter? Tunde was, my brother's name is Tunde. He was very mad. Mm -hmm. Just called him, I'm going to stab you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you. What did you do to her? He was begging. He was like, I'm sorry. It's just the devil. I don't know. I don't know. It was just the devil. So at that time, Someone was around, a church member. In his a, house? Yes, a minister, Wally. Right. That one is, is the pastor of, um, is the, the pastor of the branch in Portacourt now. Now, right. Yes. So this person is still with him? Yes, he's still with right. him. So, but as at then, he wasn't a pastor, he was a right. minister in church, like prayer minister. Right. So they took, we, they, he now said we should come, come to my house. Myself and my brother went back home. Then they now came to my house. Mm. That then they called another minister. So he started talking. He, he came with another minister? Yeah. That he was really sorry. He didn't know what just came over him. Like, he was really sorry and all that. I was there, I couldn't say anything. It was just like, you no, know, devil, like, it was the devil that he didn't have the intention of doing that. Biodo and a, a minister in his church come to your house to meet you and your brother. That means this yeah. minister knows about what had, that Biodo had had sex with you. 
Like yeah. even if he didn't know that it was a rape. Yeah, he knew that they had had sex with a girl who wasn't yet 18. Yeah. So they come to your house and they talk to you and they say it's the devil. Yeah, right. we were just outside. They didn't even enter. They enter the you house. know, my brother came out and right. came out. So um, they started saying it's the devil, this like that. Meanwhile, the minister then, which was um, Wally, Wally Sueto, mm -hmm. and there's another minister, Flo. Right. And Flo actually happens to be my, my second cousin. Flo is the second cousin. Flo is, used to be the pastor in, in yeah, Lagos. Yeah, yeah. Is he pastor. still the pastor in Lagos? I think so. Right, I okay. Really, yeah. right. So, um, but it's not like we have that close relationship. Yeah. So he came with two ministers, or he came with one? Yes, I think Wally came by himself. Right, so he came with Flo. Yes, yes. Then Wally came and joined yes, you. Yes, yes. Wow. So, um, that's how they were talking. I'm so sorry. I'm this. I wasn't really even listening to everything because all that was just on my mind was I can't get back my virginity like it's been done the way I think right now. You don't know my state. So I just said, I told my brother then, like, I want to leave the church mm. because I wasn't even listening to the word. Mm -hmm. And I told Wale, I told him I want to leave the church. So Itu, when he heard, Who he actually, he no, uh, no, that's um, Wally, Wally, Wally right. Sueto, right. the pastor in Pazakot now. Right. Itu, he was like, ah, this kind of thing, this, no, 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 I'm going to leave the church. He was right. the prayer minister then. Right. It was the one, like the fire brand, you know. So he was like, no, 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 I have to, that, ah, you can't even tolerate this, that this is just too much. It wasn't like maybe they even heard my narrative mm. or they knew how, they just knew something had happened. happened. Yeah. So, um, Wally said that and then he was like, please, please, I'm so sorry, you know, knelt down. I don't want you guys to leave the church. If you leave the church, what would people say? Mm. You know, things like that. And um, the word of God that you listen it's the word he was still talking about like is the word of God that will help you so um, I just kept quiet at that point and after a while he left I I entered the house I entered the house they were still you having yes they were still having conversation it was not later on I um, I was chatting with them. Um, I came out. Mm -hmm. I was talking with um, Minister Wally. Right. Then, so he was like, uh, "Pastor, Pastor is really sorry, and um, it's like he really needs their help." Mm. Like so basically, he he, Wally was saying, "This man is a sick man. He needs help." Like yes, that he doesn't feel this is the right time to leave to leave him. Oh, this is not the right time for Wale to leave him because yes. he needs Wale's help. Yes. Right. Like, you know, he was the prayer minister, so right. maybe he felt he could praying pray could, yeah, like just be there for him. And then it, he was talking that it's just time, you'll but be fine. And just, who will be fine? You will be fine. Yes, that I'll be fine. <laughs> that you that, will be fine. Yes, that I'll be fine. <laughs> that we should just look at him like it's a weakness, like it's something. It's that you should look at it as if Bjorn raping you, you an under 18 year old is a weakness. Yes. Right. And you know, it was just an act of the devil. I was just nodding. I was just nodding. Yeah. I was just nodding. And later on, after they all talked, you know, so I, I can't believe this happened though. I can't, you know, they all expressed themselves differently. Mm. At that time, Pastor Bjorn had left. Mm. So I came went back home and um, I know the next Sunday we didn't go to church it was like we resumed we went back to church after like two weeks you it, went back to the church yeah why well they came as in it was more like constant visits to us mm. like uh, yeah, Mokitons, you people are really really and your mother didn't know by this time my mother didn't know and we all agreed, like, we weren't to going to tell her. So, but your sisters knew? Yeah. And your sister who was in Lagos, you know, the one who had... I mean, again, how did... Like, sorry, and this, and this is a lot. This is a yeah. lot. And it's a lot for me, so I can't even imagine for you. But yeah. I'm just trying to understand. So, 
when your sister had the dream, because it was a very random dream, what made her walk up to you to tell you this dream? There's something. Yeah, it was a very that weird particular dream. day. I was, I was, I was, I was in the house about right. to sleep at Lagos, night. Right. Yes, in Lagos, because see, every night wasn't the same night mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. There are times I would cry, cry, cry. Sometimes it would be like I would almost sleep off in the bathroom. Then I would get up. I was just trying to it's adopt so in my nice. own way, you know. So that time I was in Lagos. I was actually just kneeling down. And it was like I was praying, but I wasn't praying. Mm. I was just crying, crying, crying. I mean, well, this was night, late in the night. So my sister came out of our room, of the room where she was staying. And she saw, she noticed she was just hearing sound, sound. Why? I was just saying, why me? Mm. Why me? Mm. That was just the question I kept asking, asking for a very long time, because I felt I was I was faithful to God. Mm. I felt I had led many people to Christ, mm. even though I was young. I felt I had done a lot for God, you know, mm. back in school. I would even do like a deliverance session for people. I felt I was too committed. I had time every 4 p.m. every day, once it was not church day. I would always be reading my Bible or praying that even my, my family members knew. They would just say, don't go near Busola, or she's in that room praying. I was reading one book, Conquering an Enemy Called Average. You know, I, I felt I had done a lot yeah, and yeah. I didn't expect that to These happen to me. Happen to yes, you. because I was just thinking God probably didn't just love me as much as he loves him. You know, God didn't love you as much as he loves Biodrome. Yes. Right. So I was just saying, why me, why me? And my sister oh. entered, and she saw me crying, and she said, stop, stop praying. This is not prayer. Mm. Mm. That I've been sensing something is actually wrong. She didn't even start to disturb me that I should tell her. Mm. She just told me I had one dream. That was when she now told me that dream. A dream. Right. That this, that. I just started crying because it was more like just confirmation. Yes, yes, yes. So it was that point that I told her. Right. Um, that's how we came to Ilori and she was the one that told my other siblings. I didn't call right. them. Right. So you went back to this church in two weeks because they had been coming to meet you, to beg you yes. as committed members of the church. Yes. No, not people to... I just wanted to oh, uh, commit their members. I thought I was, let me protect my family. These mm. people don't understand what's happening. That was my goal. Maybe they saw it that, oh, Busola, yes, oh, she's really zealous for God. That's why. It wasn't that. It was fear. It was fear. So I went back and but I didn't join any workforce again. Mm. I was just there. We just be involved in the self fellowship with my sisters, and you know, little by little, I just kept rejoining. People even knew, like church um, choir members. Mm. Some would walk up to me, "Why are you not in the choir anymore?" I told them, "You know, I was just struggling to sing." I still keep it because they told they told me that please just hold it, don't tell anybody. Yeah, sure. You know, so. Turn to a thing like protect your pastor again. <laughs> Jehovah. So I, I personally, it just felt like what was happening to me, which people did not know. Mm. I didn't have any form of self-esteem anymore mm. because it was more like I was saying God as God. So you have favorites. Okay, so you actually love men of God even more than anybody else. Mm. All that was just going on in my mind. So at that point, my Christianity began to, that fellowship with God I was having, I wasn't having it anymore. Because God hadn't kept his part of the bargain as far as. Yeah, so mm. I, I just was just doing things, religious just sake yes. and things like that until, um, he did one program and he told me, he walked up to me in church and he said, he's doing this program for me, like so that it will be part of the, 
healing to get me. But one pastor, Kayode Uji Sesson, I could remember that thing of like, you know, just preaching. He preached about bondage no more, that it was, you know, it's also something he's fighting. Like the pastor said, it was something he was fighting. Yes, what as was he in Pastor Biodo, I don't know, like maybe fighting sin or right. fighting. So, so you this know. session is to help him overcome this bondage. Yes, and also there was a session like for broken people. If you've been abused, I even came out when that Pastor Kyle was preaching. I came out, you know, prayed. I was crying. I came out, prayed, went back. That's, that's how it was. I just was just there yeah. until someone walked up to me mm -hmm. and the person like, oh, I like you. I want to ask you out. I didn't know, like, prior to that time. It was already telling the different people, maybe someone, and he used to say it in church then, if you want to enter any relationship, mm -hmm. make sure you tell your pastor, you know, like, they must sort of agree to it. You know, like, that was just the order. So this person did not tell him, mm -hmm. but the person that walked up to me, right. I did not know the person was actually his cousin. Okay. That's Pastor Biodo's cousin. Yeah. And that's how he walked up to me and was like, he used to see me in church, I'm just so, you know, I stay on my lane. And we started talking, we became friends. I didn't know he had gone behind me to even tell him, like, don't get close to this girl who, like, ah, the girl, maybe she's she's not ready for all this. Her mind is this, you know. He just said it in his own way, but he did not say what happened. How but he sort of it? discouraged him. I eventually went out with the guy. Right. So he told me. Ha. Huh. So yeah. So um, that's how we started talking. And I told him. I held everything, was just like this person now is my first and is going to be my last. Like right. I was yes. ready. This is the person I would mm -hmm. marry. So when I made the decision that I was going to date him, and I told him, like, there's something you need to know, and I want you to help me. I need to come out of this church. Come out of this church? Yeah. Because I wasn't listening to the word. I was just going to church, just like, almost like wasted times. I used to only enjoy prayer sessions that were led by the minister mm. then, but every other thing didn't speak to me. So um, he, I told him what happened, and immediately was like, no, 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 no. By the time he pulled me out of church, came out of church, he said, first of all, you're not going to that church again. Was it like two days after or so, he now went to church. I did not go because he already said, you're not going to that church again. By the way, the guy is late now, so mm. I got me so rest in peace. He walked up to Pastor Biodo and he told him that I know what you did, you know, that they needed to see. So Pastor Biodo came to his house right in front of the gates. I was already coming to this guy's house mm -hmm. and I met both of them talking. So as they were talking, that was when he told him, don't ever talk to Busola again. When you see her on the street and you're driving, just pass That's by. Fine. Don't, you know, interact with her. And he agreed. And I felt comfortable because this person too was ex cultist like ex cult member. Right. So and he's also more like a pastor now too. Right. So I felt like ah this person can protect this me. This person can protect me. So that's why I came out of the church. I was so relaxed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I joined Winners Chapel. You joined Winners Chapel? Yeah. So you didn't leave the church? You didn't leave the church? You still kept going to church? Yes, just I just another church. another church. Okay. Um, yeah. Something you said about um, just losing your self-esteem. I do remember a few weeks ago, you were a guest on a, a handle um, on a social uh, 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 yeah. news site, a Lori Supergirl. Yeah. And I mean, again, I found this out when we were doing the research before this interview. And you said, I remember the exact moment I lost my voice or something like that. My I remember confidence. when I lost my confidence. Is this what you were referring to? Yeah. And you have, did it come back? Did you, 
has, has it come back? I don't know how to, I don't know what to ask, but do you, have you, since that moment, and this was, you were, you were 16, 17 at the time? or it's more it, like fighting. Like, the way I've been is more like I'm just fighting through. So since that time, you've still been fighting yes. through? Yes. It's not, at some point, it affected me a whole lot. Oh. I didn't even know that was actually the bedrock of, of issues that I had. Everyone I did, I just felt like at some point, oh, this person doesn't love me, Joe. It's not real. I dropped off. I would just leave. And then I, dis I just decided men are just to be treated in a very harsh way. Mm. Like, just do. I started feeling like I needed to be inflicting pain. Mm. On, on men, like, unfortunately, they were innocent, you know. But I, I was also feeling, like, that was the way I felt I could get my power back. back. I was really just thinking, because there was nobody to walk me through anything. It was still more like, go and listen to the Word of God. And the Word of God sort of looked vague. Mm, mm. It wasn't applying to my state, you know, it was just more, uh, pray, this, I would pray, I won't feel better. Mm. I would, you know, it was just more like, see, all these things that people are saying, let me just know that I'm not worshipping idols. But then, it in doesn't, terms of this it one, okay. it's on my terms. It's mm. based on how I want to do it, you know. So mm. it, it's affected the whole lot. That's why did it affect you for so long? Why? I mean, why? Again, I do have an ex I do have experiences with people who dealt with trauma, but just for the people who are watching, why? It's it's it's, it's more than a decade. I didn't actually know you. It was, it was still affecting, affecting you. me. It was just something happening. I did not know. You know, because mm. after it happened, then and okay, I was already dating this person, mm. and then. I felt like even this person was sort of taking advantage of some things mm. because of what he knew was happened. Right. You know. So you were feeling unsafe, just generally. You couldn't yes. trust yes. your experience. So yeah. luckily, I would say luckily, both of us now broke up. I had to leave the relationship. Right. And I left. And the moment I left, I just felt that thing of you have to own things now. Right. More like be in charge of this relationship right. world or so whatever. They, don't have, they can't exercise this power over you. Anymore. Yes, yes. Like, I don't know what the intentions, because unfortunately things mm. went sour to mm. in that um, relationship. So, it's it was a mindset that yeah. I built over time. Yeah. I did not yeah. know, really. As a coping strategy for yes. this thing that you dealt with. I was still, I, I, when, I, when I relocated, I, I worked in, in, I was in school when I graduated and I came to Lagos. Me living my life normally in relationships, there were things that I would, I would do and the person would say, this looks so absurd, why are you doing this? I didn't know like maybe it was triggering something from the past. Mm -hmm. I just used to, I didn't know I had mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I never saw a psychologist, mm -hmm. I never saw any professional. So it was more like walk mm -hmm. yourself through Do the this. process. So I, it was all stumbling blocks, rise mm -hmm. up again and you know, just trying to find yourself. That was the thing. I was just trying to find my voice, mm -hmm. find myself feel like I'm living again mm. you know so it's 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 really like just two years ago yeah that I started connecting Dealing back to myself why how what, what how why did you start connecting back to yourself it's a lot of after some things you know the way I would react to things at home the way I would feel bad like my husband mm. could just make simple comments about something. Mm. I would interpret it, it the next, another way mm. that is entirely different. And he would look at me like, you have a problem. What's mm. wrong this with is you? Wrong. What is, you said this and you're already, you know, I would already interpret it. So mm. you think I'm useless? So you think I'm, you know, because that was mm. how I was feeling. Mm. I felt incapable. I, I just felt I was wor worthless. I felt, you know, so. I was, and I was still struggling to tell myself, you are special, you are special, you are special. But mm. some little things he would just do, would just trigger those things, and then I would now be there trying to find my way. 
So it was just this time and um, I just told him, I need to know the bedrock of things. Like, this is not me. Mm -hmm. This is not me. Like, who am I really? So that's all that healing process just started as a result of me saying, let me even get to know God Ooh. for who God really is. Not the God that I hear that they preach on pulpits, not the God that, mm. you know, other people talk about. I want God, and I prayed that prayer to God. I said, God, I want to feel you in my life. Like, let me know that you are real. Mm. You understand every single thing I have gone through. You must just help me out. So it was more like that time I had come to the end of myself. I mean, there's a lot to ask. But two of the things that I've heard said in the midst of the research about this is that... But quick, let me talk. I mean, a few years ago, there was a big deal about Biodun and a young woman. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was a big national scandal and he had to respond yeah. to it on the pulpit and it is to see. And I'm sure you, you heard about this. Before yeah, this... Did you know that any of this was still happening with yeah, this man? We were, people? <laughs> we're beginning to hear different things. things. Because you were from Ilori, so yes. you, you, yes, all Ilori, the Ilori is a small town, yeah. and then it was more like everybody knew everyone, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So we're hearing things, a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I would just tell my.